Welcome back everybody. As you can see, I got a little bit of a new environment because I just moved and actually I've misplaced my tripod. So I literally stacked two tables on top of each other. <laughs> so the chances of something going wrong by the end of the day is extremely high. Uh, on that note, let's proceed. <laughs> so this is where we left off. We had the uh, JavaScript side and the uh, hub, the C Sharp side. And this video is going to be a little bit about kind of a bunch of different little things, but JavaScript scope, um, a couple other things with JavaScript, and then we'll probably con conclude it all by putting this all inside of a Git repository. So we're gonna hit a bunch of different things, so I recommend we get started. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was JavaScript scope. And the idea of scope is the lifetime of a variable. So you declare a variable like this in JavaScript. And whenever we just make a variable like this, it's in what's known as the global scope. And generally, you don't want to put things inside of the global scope unless you absolutely need to, or if that's for some reason you want to do that. The reason being is the global scope is shared amongst all of the JavaScript files, and there's a high probability of you accidentally overwriting a different variable in a different file or something like that. So just, just to kind of show how the scope thing works, I'm going to create a function. So you can create a function uh, just in plain JavaScript by saying var and naming it and setting it equal to function parentheses brackets. So this is parameters and this is what's the, what the function is going to do. So in here, if we say var x equals 10, and then what we're gonna do is call that function and then what we're going to do is console dot uh, log and we're going to log x so that'll just write out x to the browser console and we'll see what x is so let's run this we'll just inspect it to see the console and you see it outputs five so let's just kind of see why why it did five it started var x equals five and then we have this function, and the, the function just runs this piece of code when we call the function. And we called that function and we reassigned 10 to the variable x. But the scope of this x is within this function. So JavaScript has function scope, meaning any variables declared inside of a function only exist within that function. And it's pretty complex, you can look up JavaScript scope if you want to learn all the details and all the, the different things you need to know about all of that. But this is like the very basics. So uh, another way, if you don't want to have to write console log all of the time, you can just leave it at that. And then over here, let me refresh it. You can just put X or whatever the name of the variable is and press enter and it will write it out to the uh, screen. So the concept of you just saying a variable name and it returns the value is known as a read eval print loop. Anytime you want to clear the console, you click this little button right here. And this will just give me some room so I can show you the power of this read. I always forget the name of these things. Read eval print loop. So you can do crazy things like if statements in here. And you can see that this will work. Yay. <laughs> so that's just, sorry, kind of off topic, but that, that's still kind of useful. Now back to this you can kind of start to get the idea of how scope works in JavaScript. And there's something that you need to know about when you start learning a lot about JavaScript. And that's known as an immediately invoked function expression. Now, I confess, my knowledge on this is a little bit iffy, but I'll teach you as best as I can. Essentially what we want to do is we want to wrap all of our code inside of a function so that way we take our variables out of the global scope. That way we're not overriding anything in different JavaScript files. So how do you create one of these immediately invoked function expressions? Well, the syntax is kind of funky, so I'm just gonna write it out, and if you wanna know the details of why it works that way, I'll give you guys a good post. So you need to create a function, and then what you need to do is you need to wrap the entire function in parentheses. And then after that, you need to have an open and close parentheses. So basically, we are creating this function here and then we are invoking it. 
So if you want this to be a little clearer, we can space it out like that. So this is an immediately invoked function expression. And what we can do is we can put all of our code inside of that. So I don't need this here anymore, so I'm just gonna delete that. And then I'll take the rest of our code, cut it and paste it. And just clean up a little bit, save. Now let's give this a run and see if it still works. Refresh. It works, so you can see our JavaScript is still working great. But the benefit now is that if we, for any reason, declared a variable in here, here, let's not in here, let's, um, in here, var x equals, hello. And then we go back to our uh, website, refresh. What we can do is say x, and you can see it's undefined. If we did not have this immediately invoked function expression, you can see what happens. Refresh, and then x, you can see it actually does know what x is. So it's always best to put everything inside of that immediately invoked function expression. Another thing that I noticed when I was looking through these videos to get ready to upload them to YouTube, I forgot a semicolon right there. And also right there. Obviously it didn't cause an issue or anything, but just probably a good thing to keep that in there. We can get rid of this variable and just kind of clean up a little bit. Save it, and that's it for the immediately invoked function expression. That's all I got for you guys in this video. Hopefully in the next video I got some more great content for you guys to consume. I will see you then. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace. Oh, I totally almost forgot. That article I was going to share with you guys is right here. Uh, just look up this title, Stack Overflow. It has some really great answers that will help you out on the details of what I was trying to explain. So that is all for real this time. Thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Be sure to subscribe.